are very proud of that art. But will you uh, take out the part that says defund police? Well, it's not a part of the mural, and uh, we certainly encourage expression, um, but we are using the city streets for city art. And in other words, that will go away. You will paint over that. I, I actually haven't even had an opportunity uh, to review it, Martha. A few years later. I've made very clear where I think the policies have been wrong um, and over a number of years. Um, and those issues relate to defunding the police, um, to making the policies of treating our police officers when employment matters different than any other employee. And in some cases, they should be. Other cases, it makes it very difficult. All right, guys, so we got to talk about the Democrats who are dealing with the consequences of the radical policies that they push for and that they embrace after the death of George Floyd. I'm telling you, uh, in the history books, 100 years from now, historians are going to say that a turning point in this country in regards to the United States falling off a cliff or falling like the Roman Empire, one of the major... Uh, turning points is going to be the death of George Floyd, right? Because that unleashed uh, the wokeness that has overtaken our country and driven some of these Democrat and progressive politicians to enact policies that have destroyed these liberal cities. And one of the policies that have destroyed the liberal cities is the policy of defund the police, or at very least, the most benign version of defund the police is to demonize police, okay? Demonize police, make it so police don't want to be police anymore in this country, and now you have a crisis of a lack of police officers. Criminals have become emboldened because of progressive criminal justice reform policies that essentially say that it is racist to lock up black people. And because it's racist to lock up black people, that means that you should be soft on crime and let criminals get away. Again, fast forward three or so years after the George Floyd incident, we have liberal cities that were once great cities in this country. They're falling, right? They are absolutely falling. And Washington, D.C. is just one of these liberal cities that has fallen to wokeness, okay, as... Uh, again, the crime crisis has overtaken the city to the point now where the politicians who live in the rich and what is thought to be safe parts of D.C. are now uh, the victims routinely of crimes as well, too. And the latest victim of crime in uh, D.C. is a Democrat by the name of um, Henry Caller, okay, who is from Texas. Now, he's not a defund of police Democrat. In fact, he pushed back against defund funding the police however he did get on board with the uh george floyd policing bill from democrats however regardless this guy again is the latest politician to suffer the consequences of what democrats advocated for take a look because congressman henry cuellar escaped the situation last night without injury he was robbed of his vehicle phone and other items in an armed carjacking it happened around 9 30 p.m outside of his apartment building that was in the navy yard neighborhood it's a popular area about a mile south of the capitol building dozens of other lawmakers they live there lots of young professionals as well cuellar's chief of staff wrote as congressman cuellar was parking his car this evening three armed assailants approached the congressman and stole his vehicle luckily he was not harmed and is working with local law enforcement. Thank you to Metro PD and Capitol Police for their swift action and for recovering the congressman's vehicle. Republican Senator Mike Lee, he weighed in as well, writing, my friend Rep Cuellar became the victim of a crime tonight in what's considered a nice part of D.C., D.C. is dangerous. Something's gone terribly wrong here for far too long. Congress has the sole power to make D.C.'s laws and must intervene. So check this out. Year to date, 750 carjackings have occurred in the district. In 75 percent of those cases, a gun was involved. And this is the second House Democrat attack near the Capitol this year. Back in February, Congresswoman Angie Craig was assaulted in the elevator of her apartment building. Fortunately, that suspect was caught and then charged. Guys. And Alexandria, that neighborhood, uh, Navy Yard, where uh, National Stadium is, is very popular at night. There are a lot of young people who live there. A lot of uh, members of Congress actually live in some of the high rises. I think AOC lives in that neighborhood as well. At night, there's a lot of foot traffic, but at the same time, there's a lot of this too. 
No, you're right. And there are a lot of people who have really been trying to hold on to this idea of, of Navy Yard be, being a new hotspot. I mean, it right. has been for a couple of years. They have great restaurants, a lot of entertainment. If you see it, it's built up quite nicely. But every couple of months, you hear of a shooting taking place, a murder, and these carjackings, they are ever present all throughout the city. Well, and they didn't know it was Henry Cuellar, right? You don't, you think it was just random? Yeah, it seems in most of these cases, in most cases, they are young people, juveniles committing these crimes. I don't think they would have recognized a congressman. Uh, they might have recognized a car as being a good one to steal and then sell off. I just got a note from one of my kids. It happened outside their house oh. last oh. night. Well, well, make your heart tell them to be yeah, careful. I know it. Yeah, so you seen that, you heard that, okay? A Democrat got carjacked in D.C. Even the nice parts of D.C. aren't safe. Right. You have criminals run around committing crimes, people getting shot, crazy stuff happening. OK. And, um, you know, at some point, the politicians have to get serious about it because, I mean, they live there. Right. And they may just have to override the woke D.C. City Council that is being run by radical progressives because these people don't really see a problem. Right. They don't see an issue with crime. In fact, these are the same people that try to create softer penalties for criminals who commit these types of violent acts. And if it wasn't for Republicans in Congress, the bill probably would have went into law, making D.C. even less safe. But even woke Democrats like Muriel Bowser, even she is having a change of heart, okay, and, and confronting the um, woke wing of the Democrat Party, the D.C. Democrat City Council, in regards to some of their policies that she f feels uh, were wrong over the years, even though she supported things like defund the police, she's now doing a 180 and changing her tune. Take a look. As violent crime in the district continues to rise, leaders are expected to extend emergency legislation while working to address crime-related bills. Yeah, 7 News on your side's Caroline Patrick is joining us live outside the mayor's office. That's where leaders are expected to address crime tomorrow. Caroline, what are we expecting? Exactly. So they plan to discuss this tomorrow during uh, which before the October 18th date when that emergency legislation is supposed to expire. Mayor Bowser said that she's calling for a permanent solution. Of course, I think violent offenders should be held accountable. Chairman Phil Mendelson of the District of Columbia saying he would support council member Brooke Pinto's crime bill. If we're looking at trying to stop carjackings or shootings right now, talking about whether a sentence for somebody who's sentenced uh, two years from now and whether it is 20 years or 30 years, that doesn't have an effect on the shootings and carjackings that are happening today. Mayor Bowser said on Monday that there's temporary legislation that will keep the emergency legislation active until next summer. Not only should the emergency be permanent, but all aspects of the safer, stronger bill that we introduced should be enacted permanently. Um, and I think that not only is good policy, but it's it's necessary, um, I think, for the camp, the council to keep its momentum going towards um, legislation that's going to help keep D.C. safer. Currently, the emergency bill makes it easier for the system to keep suspects accused of violent crimes in jail until trial. And it enhances penalties as well as creates a felony for people who shoot a weapon recklessly in public. Yeah. Mayor Bowser uh, said she thinks the council has gotten it wrong over the years. I've made very clear where I think the policies have been wrong um, and over a number of years. Um, and those issues relate to defunding the police, um, to making the policies of treating our police officers when employment matters different than any other employee. And in some cases they should be, other cases it makes it very difficult. There are currently four bills before D.C. Council. We reached out to Councilmember Brooke Pinto. So far, we have not heard back. For now, live in Northwest, Caroline Patrikas, 7 News. All right, Caroline, thank you. And included in one of Councilmember Pinto's crime bills, ways to improve the troubled D.C. 911 Center. This Thursday, Pinto will hold a roundtable on the Office of Unified Communications. The public can sign up to testify at this. 7 News has covered the deadly mistakes at that 911 call center for years now. Pinto's recent bill calls for more transparency and accuracy at the OUC. Yeah, so you've seen that, you heard that, okay? Um, 
you know, the Democrats are magically looking to be tough on crime. They're trying to act like they never supported policies and movements that led to what we have right now, which is a disaster, chaos in these liberal cities. But yeah, they're pretending to be tough on crime. Don't worry, though. Don't worry, right? Because Mill Bowser, okay, who happens to be a black woman, is about to install a permanent police chief by the name of Miss Pam Smith, who is also a black woman, and they're going to fix it, right? They're going to solve the problem, okay? Because, you know, black women are problem solvers, okay? They get things done in this country. This is what the liberal left says, right? So let, let's, let's hear about how these black women are going <laughs> to solve this problem that they created in this city. There are 209 homicides in the nat nation's capital. This will make a third year in a row that D.C. has surpassed 200 lives lost to violence. The news coming as the nomination process has begun for acting D.C. Police Chief Pamela A. Smith. Let's get right over to Fox 5 Stephanie Ramirez. She's live at the Wilson Building where the acting chief is addressing council members. Stephanie. And guys, you can see her on the screen. The monitor's in the hallway here. She is speaking behind closed doors right now. Part of the nomination process is the council's public safety committee holding its first nomination roundtable for acting police chief Pamela Smith. This committee roundtable has been going on since around 11 o'clock this morning with more than 40 people signed up to testify and speak on her nomination. The acting police chief in, in her part of this is speaking to the issue that she has been working on since she was nominated in July and listening in on the round table there we can tell you she spoke on the issue of hiring new officers the acting chief saying that they're facing their lowest staffing levels in nearly 50 years and that clearly being down around 500 officers is a lot almost a district worth she addressed staff well-being as another focus acting chief Pamela Smith told the committee her strategic plan has three areas of focus prevention and intervention sustainability and accountability other actions discussed include adding 22 new CCTV cameras, with 28 coming this fall. She also spoke to traffic checkpoints, issuing hundreds of tickets. And while today we are facing another grim homicide count, the acting chief claims that since launching the violent crime initiative, that they've seen a 37 percent drop in homicides and 27, uh, 23 drop in robberies in a recent 30-day period compared to the previous 30-day period. Her plan is focused on a holistic approach to fighting crime, pointing to including DYRS on this recent juvenile curfew as an example. Having this all of government government approach is really critical as we address public safety because I, I've heard others say it and I truly believe it, you know, like where we are as it relates to crime, you know, we can't police our way out of this. We're going to have to have the support of some of the other agencies um, that are in, in, in D.C. government. And I will say um, they've been very supportive. I've met with, if, if not all, just about all of the, of the directors or interim directors of our D.C. Um, agencies. And the acting police chief does have a lot of support from community members as well. But there are also people who testified saying no to her nomination. The first person to testify said that the city needs a Marine at war. Now, her nomination has to go through committee before it's presented to the entire council for a. Yeah, so you've seen that you heard that. I agree. They do need a Marine at war, right? They need somebody that, in my opinion, looks the part, right, in regards to being able to stop crime. But, hey, who knows? Maybe I'm wrong, right? I'm just saying I've noticed a similar pattern across all these liberal cities who, you know, the constituents there, they claim that the police are racist, right? But you have all black people, right, and women running these police forces, okay? So, I'm just again, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, hey, is there a pattern here? Like, what is the common denominator in regards to, What's going on with police and crime in these liberal cities? Again, I think that Democrats are probably the biggest issue. But I'm just saying, um, if I was a bet man, I wouldn't have too much faith in uh, the leadership in that city to actually stop crime. Even though they're trying to talk tough, um, they know it's a crisis. I just don't believe that they're the ones that actually do anything about it, right? But again, with the way that D.C. votes, hey, again, this is kind of what they asked for, right? I think that Republicans need to step up and to take control of the Capitol if they actually really want to stop crime and stop letting these Democrats deal with it because they clearly have shown they're too incompetent to deal with it. That's just my opinion. But hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.